Hi, welcome back to the Race Coordinator um, Race Configuration Tutorial. Um, this is uh, part five or six. I forget. I've lost track. There's so many at this point. I'm sorry that it's taking so long, but there's just so much stuff to cover. Um, I just want to emphasize that in this tutorial, we're not actually going to set up any races. We're just going to talk at a fairly high level of the remaining properties that I haven't gotten to yet so far. Um, and in future tutorials, we will actually um, design those tutorials to set up specific race formats with targeting specific properties that we want to showcase. Um, but for now, we're just going to hit as many properties as I can and maybe maybe finish, maybe not, um, and we'll go from there. So where we left off last time, we last time we were talking about a step-up race, um, so we're not going to talk about that this time. We're going to talk about the last property in the scoring setup um, wizard. Again, these all are equivalent over in the management screen, so it's just easier to show in the wizard for this particular tutorial. Um, so we're on the drop heat um, scoring setup, and again, the scoring setup is for overall ranking of drivers. It has, it takes the heat scoring, which is done in the heat setup, and applies whatever things you set these different um, these different properties to calculate the overall standings for the race. Um, this is ultimately the most important thing in the race, simply because it determines who wins. Um, so the last property in here that we haven't talked about is the drop heat property. This property allows you to drop n number of heats, and that's why it's called drop lowest n heats over here. Um, so what that what that means is that if you're doing, say, on, you're on a four-lane track and you do a standard round robin or any kind of round robin, that means that each driver will race in four heats. Um, and then based on the heat results, um, you know, their scores will be, you know, their, their, uh, their overall standings will be calculated. Well, this field here, if set to anything but zero, will allow you to drop the lowest score heat for that driver. So let's say they have one really bad heat and you set this to one. Um, that one really bad heat will be dropped and only their top three heats will be, will be counted. If you're, you know, you can set it up to drop the two lowest and then only two. Maybe you only want their best heat, so then you, you drop three out of four on a four lane track. If it's a two, three, you know, if it's a two lane track, you would only drop one. Obviously, this value should be lower than the number of heats that the drivers participate in. Um, if you set, if on a four lane track and a round robin, you set it to four, it's gonna, it actually won't drop any because it doesn't start dropping any until you've, gotten at least that number of heats. So you want to keep it under the total number of heats um, that the driver will participate in. But that's it. Um, it really only makes sense. This value doesn't make a whole lot of sense unless this other value accumulate is checked, which by default it is. Um, think about what that means. The accumulate means to add the heat scores together to, to figure out the overall score of the overall standing score. If you're not adding them together, why would you care about dropping them? Because if you're not adding them together, it means you're already just taking the best um, value, uh, the best heat score. So, you know, it's kind of a semi-redundant, but it will allow you to um, manipulate how you accumulate the values. Um, so that's that one. That's all I wanted to talk about there. So that ends the overall standings, uh, the overall scoring setup for you. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the start setup real quick. Um, the rest of these should go pretty fast, hopefully. Um, the start setup is that start sequence in which um, Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. This is um. This is these these groupings here um, determine how you start and finish. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Just how you start the race, basically, or or heat even, um, including restarting if on a yellow flag. So um, the first property is the hot start property. Do you want track power on or off when the when the heat is about to start? Um, there's advantage. I mean, you to, to to even do this, you have to have a relay um, installed on your track. If you do have an, a relay installed correctly, you can cut power to the track before the heat starts. Cutting power means no false starts are possible. Leaving a hot start on will allow false starts to occur. And then there are further parameters that that determine exactly how to um, how to handle false starts. And we'll get to those in a bit. So that's all this property does: is the track power on or off at the beginning of a heat. And depending on um, other configurations, is going to determine some of some of how you want to some of what you want to do with this property, um, and we'll get to that when we get there. Um, the next property is the start behind the track sensor property. Um, sometimes you want to start depending on how your track is labeled and things like that. You want to start behind the track sensor. Sometimes you want to start in front of the track sensor. Um, if you start behind the track sensor, race coordinator will calculate reaction time off at least the first heat. Again, depending on your configuration. Um, maybe all of your heats. Um, it's just a nice little stat it'll do for you. Um, really, all this does is if you start behind the sensor, it treats the first lap that occurs as a reaction time, and it throws it out. It doesn't count it as a lap. If you start in front of the sensor, 
it will count that first lap as a legitimate lap. So you'd want to start the cars just in front of the sensors in theory in that in that condition in that case. Um, heat start location. Um, this is an important property, and this is again where hot start starts to come in. Um, heat start location um, determines where in each heat the driver starts their car. Now, you might be thinking, okay, well, I already set the start behind sensor to true, but in this case, what this is is for really it's for for subsequent heats. So if, if there are four, you know, in a round robin on a four lane track, there will be four heats for the driver. Um, if this is checked after the first heat the driver participates in, rather than starting the car at the track sensor, you start the car, you, you start the driver's car where he left off the track on the previous heat, so you'll have to mark down somehow, whether whether it's by using track sections or whatever, um, where that previous driver had finished that previous heat. Um, the idea here is that it makes it simple, you just, you know, you don't have to worry about actually adding fractional laps to, to a driver's heat total or things like that. You can just pick up the car, move it over a lane, put it on the proper lane where he left off on the previous heat, and you continue on. What race coordinator will do is it will combine the time of the previous heat's last lap with the current heat's current lap, the first lap, to get that first lap's time. So it'll appear as though this this first lap and the first heat is a normal lap. It'll combine the previous lap's time with the current lap's time. So you know, so if you finish your first heat right in front, you know, just short of the track sensor, you won't in the next heat you won't get a point one lap time and therefore get thrown out because of the min lap time. It'll actually take that point one and add it to however long it took you to get there from the previous heat. Um, so that lap, that point one lap, will actually get counted. Um, it's a very useful thing. I actually race with this turned on because I'm lazy and I like to just pick up my car, move it to the next lane, and carry on. It makes for it, it can make for a much faster, smoother um, uh, race form ro ro heat rotation if you can keep track of what, where your car is supposed to be in the next heat. That's the key, because if you don't know where it's supposed to go in the next heat, you know, you don't know where to put it. Um, that can be especially difficult on larger, um, you know, with, with a larger number of drivers and the more exotic race rotation formats. Because if, if in a simple straight round robin, I'm just moving over a lane, you know, I might run all four of my, 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 uh, my heats in a row, so I just pick it up, move it, and keep going, and, and that's it. So... You know, really, again, it depends on how you race and what you want to do. Um, with the um, start at current position, you're probably going to want the hot start. Again, this is what I was talking about. You're probably going to want the hot start turned off. Um, that's because you don't want the track power to be on if a car in their second heat is starting in the middle of the track. Because if you leave the power on, they will be able to go that entire half lap before race coordinator will detect a false start obviously the only way it can detect a false start is if they go through the track sensor. So by leaving hot start on and start at current on the heat start location here, you could allow a driver to cheat that entire lap. I mean, there's a min lap time consideration in there, but they could still cheat it. So definitely probably want to turn hot start off if start at current is on. Um, the next few properties are to deal with how to handle false starts. Um, again, false starts can only occur if hot starting is on and, and um, and, and typically only ma you know, make sense if the start behind the sensor um, is set. If you're starting in front of it, we can't detect a false start. There's just no way. So again, you know, another point, starting in front of the sensor with this unchecked, you're going to probably want hot start turned off again as well. Um, but if you do have hot start on and, let's say, and you are starting behind the sensor, um, on, a, on a false start, if the driver goes too soon, you can cause, you can cause the, uh, the clock to stop and just enforce a restart of the race. Basically, you, you, you cut down their advantage. This will give you the opportunity to um, to go into the track, you know, you could subtract track sections off of the driver's total at that point to penalize them, or you can apply a false start lap penalty here. Um, this this will either be a lap penalty or a time penalty based on um, how the race, how the heat is scored, but you can assign them the penalty right here. Um, so that'll cover false starts, you know, and, and so you can handle false starts pretty much any way you like. Um, that's all I have time for right now. Um, we'll do the rest of these uh, start properties in the next tutorial. Thanks.